got a major break right here. Y'all see that? See that crack? Good morning guys welcome back to the channel my name is daniel and you're watching triple r farms and uh we got a busy day on tap for today uh we're headed over here to the hay barn right now phillips driving the fertilizer rig james driving the uh, 18 wheeler with the fertilizer mark's bringing the uh, kts so uh, we're gonna get filled up and uh then we're going to the soybean field over here we're gonna try it out number one it may be too wet because we got some rain, some more rain over the weekend. And number two, corn may be too tall, but we're gonna give it a shot and uh, see what happens. Uh, if we can't run, like I said on the last video, we're gonna have to pull the trigger and get a ground rig uh, to spread some dry fertilizer over this corn because we need to get it out pretty quick. But uh, now once I get Phil up running over here, uh, me and Mark gonna go back to the shop. We gotta get my rogator ready to spray. We gotta get all the chemical out to the concrete pad out there. Got to put a few pumps on some shuttles and then I got to get laying by some corn. Uh, Dad, he is up there at the gravel pit. He's going to be planting grain sorghum today. So that's what he's going to be doing with Wayne. So uh, yeah, it's going to be a busy one. And on top of that, we got a 70% chance of rain today. So we're going to have to be watching the radar too. But uh, it's going to be a fun one. So uh, sit back and enjoy the video and uh, let's get it started. Oh, it's running over, Phillips, running over. What? <laughs> 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 oh, <boy. laughs> Got it. <laughs> it ain't Friday the 13th. <laughs> All right, so I got Philip on it now. Uh, he was moving his pickup trucks around and getting them settled while they were doing that. Uh, I went ahead and did all the inroads I could and uh, everything looked fine, but now he's out here in the middle of the field in the straight rows and this is where uh, this land is bedded up. So these, the corn sitting on top of beds, which uh, makes the tractor even lower. But uh, anyway, this is what I wanted to see, make sure that when the tractor went over it, it's not breaking this corn stalk off right here or bending it too bad, but really, it doesn't look bad at all. The only part I'm really worried about is like right where the tractor rides over it. That's the lowest part of the whole machine and all is right where the tractor, the undercarriage of the tractor, and I'm dead in the middle of uh, where it ran. There's a duel, there's a duel. So, um, all the rest of the rows, they're fine. Um, it's just right where the tractor is going to be running is, uh, where we're going to be doing the damage if we do any damage. Man, this corn is growing like crazy. If you tried to come in here in another day or two, you would not be able to run that tractor. This corn would be too tall. So, um, he's going to have to get after it. I 
I think he's good to go. He's just gonna have to really keep an eye on it. And if he has to slow down, but if he starts doing any damage, we just gotta stop. But right now, everything looks good. So we gotta get back to the shop, get our rogator ready, get our chemical ready. And uh, we gotta start laying by some corn quickly. And we gotta watch the radar too. Sun has not popped out all morning. It's overcast. You know, it's like 70 degrees, but uh, anyway, we do have that chance of rain. We're gonna have to watch. So we'll watch him make one more pass, and if everything looks good, then we'll get out of here. All right, next thing on the list is I got my new pumps that came in right here. Uh, me and Dad were putting them together, but we didn't finish because we didn't have enough one-inch hose. So what I got to do, I got to join the bottom of it, which goes to the bottom of the shuttle with the 36-inch piece right there. And then I also am going to cut a six-foot section. I always like to make them a little bit longer where they'll reach a little bit farther than uh, how they come in the in the original box. So we got two of them to do. Mark's over there filling up my Roundup. And uh, then we got to get everything out to the concrete pad. And uh, then we'll be ready to spray. So let's get it started. Mark's got all my chemical lined up perfect. Uh, but before we fill up, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but we got some pretty dark clouds starting to hang around. So uh, we'll take a look at the radar and uh, see what it looks like before we put all this chemical in. And I'll go over what I'm putting in in just a second. See what the future view looks like. goodness well that doesn't look good so we got a little window to get a couple of loads out so uh, that's what we're gonna do so let's get filled up all right let's go over the recipe for the corn this is corn lay by right here uh, first up is our atrazine 4l we're going with 48 ounces to the acre of this um, this is basically gonna give you some residual for uh, some broad leaves and stuff like that uh, it's going to create like a little layer to keep anything from coming up. It doesn't kill anything on contact. So that's going to be our residual herbicide. We got a couple of them. Next is this network right here. Now this is nothing but uh, micronutrients for the plant. We got some potash, molybdenum. We got some zinc in there. So we got network. We're going with a quart to the acre of that. 
Then we got our Roundup Power Max. Now this is gonna kill everything on contact. So everything that's above ground growing right now, this should take care of just about everything. Uh, we're going with a quart to the acre of that. Okay, right here we got our Prowl H2O. I don't know if y'all can see that. But uh, I just poured it up in this shuttle right here to make it easier on me where I could pop it out. Um, so this is another residual right here, but the main reason we're using this one is it's supposed to be really good on those grasses that we had a problem with, the Texas Panicum and the uh, Signal Grass. So we got Prowl, we're going three pints of the acre of Prowl H2O. So we got our Lotus right here. This is another one that's gonna help with broad leaves and grasses. Uh, we're going three ounces to the acre, so not much of that bad boy. Tombstone. This is our insecticide. Uh, this will be targeting any insects that are out there like your uh, stink bugs and uh, any worms or anything that's eating on the corn right now. We'll just throw that in there just as a safety safety precaution basically but we're going with uh 1.6 ounces to the acre of uh, tombstone then we have our wet saw from schaefer's that is our surfactant to make everything uh flow out of there real good and mix good and uh molly this is not prowl this is molly poured up in a prowl jug but anyway we're going with six ounces to the acre of molly that's just gonna be another nutrient we're gonna uh, put in the plant. But I know this looks like a lot of chemicals and a lot of them uh, kind of overlap each other as far as controlling different weeds and grasses. But the main thing is corn sits out there a long time before you harvest it. So you've got to have a lot of chemicals that will keep weeds and morning glory and grass and all that. It's gotta last a long time uh, before you come in there to harvest. So looks like a lot but it's pretty much our normal procedure every year and uh, it's been working in the past but anyway that's what we got so let's get her filled up and uh let's get spraying So you know what time it is. It is time to crank the pivot up and walk it out of the way so we can spray behind it and fertilize behind it. And that is why we got the wall spray. Um, but I had a little trouble this morning um, with my row gator. Could not get the inductor to actually suck the chemical down. I could not get that suction flow. So I worked on it and worked on it. I took, I took just about every hose loose all those hose clamps uh did not have a kinked hose this time i made sure but i took everything loose all the hoses got chemical all over me luckily i had another shirt um in my truck change into i don't know what i actually did to get it going but it finally just all of a sudden when i put everything back together it went to working and i was able to fill up um but anyway yeah i had a lot of trouble this morning so this is this is only my second load right now but um everything is working good now i just have no idea what happened i don't know if some kind of piece of trash or a little seal from one of the um jugs or something got sucked in there uh and got caught in a tea somewhere but anyway whatever it was it freed itself up and uh, she's working good now but just did not get off to a good start like we were hoping to well that is not good hmm i just hope there's a computer board in here okay i hate these sheds
Where did all this wind come from? You see the corn blowing like crazy? It is really picked up strong right now. It is blowing steady across here. Pretty daggum good. So that's got me stopped spraying. This is the Edwards field number two. This is the one I was going to, but when I was coming down the middle road, saw a lot of water in the middles. So I decided to go up there. We got a field at the top of the hill up there. Anyway, it's typically drier up there, but it was extremely wet up there and I read it up pretty good. So this one is definitely out of the picture for spraying today. It is just too wet. Um, so I got one more field over there, kind of by the hay barn. It's a little more red dirt. Uh, we can go over there and look at it. Uh, if we can't do those two up there, then we're pretty much shut down for the day because of the field conditions. It's just too wet and we would just rut up way too bad. And right now, I can't spray anyway because of the wind. But anyway, while I was right here, I thought I'd show you pretty neat. In this field, we've got three different crops underneath this one pivot. We got corn right here in this section. We've got our soybeans right here on this section. And this section over here is our cotton. So three different crops on uh, this pivot this year. But I thought I'd show you the beans real quick and then we'll take a look at the cotton. And then we'll hop in the row gator and uh, go check out some more fields. All right, so here's our beans. Um, these are some Pioneer beans, 53A11. Um, they look really good. They've been getting plenty of moisture, plenty of sunshine, and they are loving it. Uh, they are just growing like a weed. I tell you what I've been seeing more and more of in our crops, especially over here on our heavier dirt, this blacker soil, is I've been seeing more and more of these little snails. See that guy? These two right here. Got one there, one there. Another one, another one. They're just everywhere. I never really see them on the plant. They're mostly on the ground. So I don't have any idea if they're hurting us or if they're beneficial, but I just see more and more every year. Look at all of them. I don't know. There are the beans. Now you've seen them. Let's go look at the cotton. So here's the cotton. You can tell we've been getting some pretty big rains. We've got a little bit of washing right here. But uh, the cotton looks good. Some of them are starting to put on their first true leaf. Uh, but when they just have the first, the two leaves right here, that's, that's what you call cotyledon stage. They got the two elephant ears. Um, when they put the next leaf on, that's the first true leaf, like this one right here. But they look good. What we try to do is we always drop two seed every time, about every nine inches. It'll be two cotton seed that are dropped, two hill drops, what they call it. That's the way we've always done it. You can simulate cotton, um, kind of like corn, but we've always just done the two hill drop. We try to shoot for 36,000 on our uh, cotton seed population per acre. Um, so that's why you see two plants together pretty much everywhere is what you should see two 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 which means the planter did a good job the reason behind that is an old theory cotton really sensitive about coming up especially if the ground gets really hard and crusty on top the the vigor on the seed they don't usually don't have enough to break through that soil so the theory is if you have two seed right there together you got two pushing up through that soil um, rather than one and they can break that crust and uh, come on up out of there. But anyway, it looks good. This is a 2141 Delta Pine. Excellent variety, was super good for us last year. It's got the nematode um, resistant in there uh, for reniform and root knot. Uh, we are really bad with reniform, and um, anyway, we saw some really good cotton with uh, 2141 last year for us. So there's your cotton. Now you've seen it. We're going to hop back in the row gator and uh, see if we can go find some more fields that are dry enough to uh, keep spraying if the wind dies down. I 
was trying to figure out how I keep getting prowl on my hands, but I guess that's why I keep accidentally touching my pants. Of course, I didn't have any pants in my truck to change into. I had a shirt, but I uh, did not have an extra pants, so I guess my hand keeps rubbing on my pants and I uh, getting prowl on them. Have you done the set that's right in front of the shed? Uh-uh, just right down the side. You went, you went the one right down by the shed? Uh, not on this side, but that okay. side. So you got the one in front of the shed and... Uh, no, not the one that butts up to it, just the one that parallel and goes all the way down. So it needs to keep walking? Yep. Okay. It's got to go a ways. We got a major break right here. Y'all see that? See that crack? It's broke on both sides, see? Look at that side. Mm. Well, this thing is shut down. That's going to be a pretty big well job right there. I had no idea we had any cracks right there. But um, we're going to see if we can make it to the end. Well, he made it to the road. So that's good. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out there and watch. We would love to go ahead and get this thing all the way to the shop where we can work on it at our shop. It'll be a lot easier. But uh, I'm going to get out and see if we can uh, see if it'll fold up. If it doesn't look too sketchy, then we'll see if we can take it home. All right. That's what we're going to watch. Better not get under this thing. It looks pretty rickety. God. Fertilizer down the ear. You sorry son of a gun. That went right in my ear. Jeez. Oh yeah, she's cracked. Goodness gracious, she's cracked. That went right down my ear. <laughs> what a day, guys. What a day. Um, it's just been one of those Mondays, but uh, we did end on some positive stuff. Uh, Philip was able to get the rig here, fertilizer rig here, so we can uh, work on it here at the shop. We'll do a much better job here. Um, nothing Philip did wrong, uh, just a stress fracture on that tubing that probably was cracked for a while and then it finally just gave out. Um, just nothing he did wrong, I just wish we would have probably found that crack a little sooner so we could have welded it up before she actually broke, but anyway, nevertheless, it is here at the shop, so we'll call somebody in to work on it. I don't have time, I gotta keep laying by corn, so um, that's what I'm gonna be focused on tomorrow. If we do not get rained out, um, could not do any more spraying today. Number one, the ground was too wet over there in the valley and up there at Tyler. Number two, it was the wind never died down. And number three, we got rain showers all around us right now that are building uh, building up by the second. So uh, spraying for the rest of the day without the window. So we'll just have to see what happens tonight. See how much rain we get. And if we can spray tomorrow, we'll go ahead and, and uh, 
hopefully the land will be dry enough where we can hopefully try to uh, finish up laying by the corn. But the other thing is, is uh, we're gonna have to call in a ground rig. Like I said, a rogator with air boom. Uh, we got a guy we use, Honeycut. Uh, he's probably been on some of the videos, but anyway, he is kind of in the area. So I gotta make a phone call to him to see if he can finish up doing this corn this week. Hopefully he can, if he can, that would be awesome. And uh, then we can check that box and move on. Uh, let's see, uh, I had stuff happen to me all day. Uh, right there at the end, I had some 28005 drip right down in my ear with some zinc and with some boron. And um, what else was mixed in there? Oh, some KTS, some liquid potassium went down in there too. So uh, then I had the chemical get all over me on the rogator. So yeah, I'm ready to get to the house and get washed up. But um, it's just uh, been one of those days, but uh, we'll regroup tomorrow and uh, we'll see if we can knock it out of the park tomorrow. But uh, as for this video, guys, we are done. Uh, thank you for watching our channel. We really appreciate it. If you want to do us a favor, click the thumb if you like the video. And uh, if you want to subscribe, click Triple R Farms logo up here. to walk you through subscribing. It's totally free and uh, we'd love to have you on the channel. Uh, other than that, guys, we will see y'all on the next one. And uh, yeah, right here.